ویلکم as well i always tell afl pakistan that this is their own show and their own platform so we're part and parcel of them as well once they're representing the national team so we're going to be talking about the schedule of the afl asia cup in vietnam and we're going to be talking about pakistan team's preparations and uh, you know uh, it's very simple that this sport that used to be in the stages of inception has now gained a professional footing in pakistan the players be it from the male side or the female segments uh, they're completely talented the skill is being imparted to them as well and i think one Once we talk about the developing AFL nations around the world, Pakistan really stands out on top of them. So we're going to be talking all about that and all the thought process and all the technicalities on today's program as well. Then, of course, when we move on to the second segment, we tell you that Pakistan has wrapped up their series against Zimbabwe. They've beaten them in the third one-day international in convincing fashion by 99 runs, and they've won the series 2-1. So once again, a good outing for Pakistan. After scoring 303 runs, they managed to defend the target with ease as well. There were some gritty partnerships for Zimbabwe in between as well. Craig Irvine, the skipper, did a fantastic job, but credit to our bowlers and the skipper who held their nerve to get us this series as well. So that's what we're discussing in detail on the show as well. And we've got a bunch of people that we're going to be introducing uh, to you as well. And like I said, we're going to be giving you all the details as well. So, uh, you know, it, like I said, all of us are part and parcel of this game. And I think the responsibility comes on all of us to celebrate them as national heroes because they are. So once they participate, once they win the cup, which we're very hopeful, we're not even thinking otherwise. So we know they're going to win the Asia Cup and they're going to come back celebrating in style and we're going to be rooting out for them as well. So let me just introduce you to all the fantastic people that are joining us representing AFL Pakistan. First of all, in studios, we've been joined by someone. He's making a comeback, you know, sort of this WrestleMania comebacks in WWE, but he's making a comeback after a couple of years. He always calls this country's home as well. We're very honored to be joined by the official head coach of the Pakistan AFL team, Michael Gallis, all the way from Australia. Hello, Assalamu alaikum, Michael. How are you? Assalamu alaikum. Very happy. Very good to be here. Two years goes very quick. Uh, <laughs> Pakistan, Zindabad. Pakistan, Zindabad. And I'm sure we're going to say Pakistan, Zindabad in Vietnam as well. And also joining uh, alongside Michael is somebody who's representing the AFL Pakistan women's team as well, Ms. Chaman Mushtaq, who joins us. Assalamu alaikum, Chaman. How are you? Wa alaikum assalam. Thank you so much for inviting us and giving us chance to uh, say something about uh, Aussie rule football uh, in Pakistan. Thank you very Thank much. You it's, so a, much. It's an honor to have you as well. And also we've been joined by the skipper of the Pakistan men's team as well. I uh, was just telling him before the show that the, he's become a regular feature now. So he's more acquainted to television than all of us. So we're very honored to be joined by Mr. Tala, the skipper of the Pakistan AFL team as well. Assalamu alaikum, Tala. How are you? Well, Islam. Alhamdulillah, I'm good. Thank you Thank for you. having us here. Thank you for joining Thank us, Tala. We're very proud and very honored to have you on the show as well. And also we've been joined by somebody who happens to be representing Uh, the Pakistan uh, women's AFL team as well. She's already making headlines and I think she is that secret weapon that we are launching as well because when I got to know and Michael told me about that height factor, then my God, did I have to look like this. So I think it's plain <laughs> simple. So very honored to be joined by Sabika Khaled. Assalamu alaikum, Sabika. How are you? Welcome to Sports Extra. Assalamualaikum Salam. I am very good. Thanks very much. Thank me. you for thank you for joining us as well. Now all the details about AFL Pakistan and the Asia Cup that is coming in this report. Let's go take a look. The Australian Football League is thrilled to announce the inaugural Asia Cup, a groundbreaking tournament exclusively for Asian citizens. This historic three-day event will take place on December 6 to 8 at Vietnam. Pakistan's national AFL team's camp is being held in Islamabad, where 25 male and 25 female players are undergoing intense training. The camp is led by Australian coach Michael Gallus, who is focusing on enhancing both the fitness and skills of the players through specialized drills. A total of 16 teams, including both men's and women's teams, will participate in the tournament. Pakistan's squad is looking to defend their title after winning the 2022 Asia Cup. The players are working hard to ensure they are at their peak performance for the international competition. And there you have it. Sabah gives us all the details of this tournament and the Pakistan team's training as well. So obviously, I think we start the discussion off with Michael. So Michael, you've had all the updates before coming as well. And since you're here now, you've uh, 
gained ground. So you now witnessing what is there on offer for the Asia Cup. Uh, first of all, just tell us about our training, our practice, our preparations, and then of course we move on to the tournament. Yeah, well, thanks to uh, Chaudhry Ali, AFL General Secretary, uh, President Sadar Darik, uh, sponsor Abed Hussain from Multan. You know, great team effort. The, the men's and the women's team have been training two nights a week for the last uh, year. So um, when I got here, the fitness levels are high, the skill levels are high. When I got here in 2022, I had to start from scratch, but all the groundwork's already done. So I just got to come in and strategize, teach the players how to play in their right positions and, uh, and build their confidence. And today, the best session for the men's team, like really you've talked about them winning. As I sat here with you in 2022, I said, AFL Pakistan doesn't go to compete, they go to win. So uh, same thing in relation to this. Captain Tuller outstanding as the Ruckman. Our midfield, Tahir and Ashen. And then a new player, Raman from uh, Multan today, took the game apart. Tuhid, international soccer player, he now AFL champion. Goal scorer from the forward pocket with a bus, a bus from Swabi. And Gujawala Rahil, this big man, he bang, coming out of <laughs> half back. Okay, so we've got all different areas now represented. They all know how to play. They come together as a team and we go in there and we win the Asia Cup and show great uh, pride and passion for the nation of Pakistan. And you forgot to say inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, there you go. So we're all lined. I think uh, the numbers have drastically increased. We've found so much great talent across Pakistan. And I'm particularly very inspired when I see the great numbers on, on our female side as well. I think that is also something to really talk about and celebrate as well. But Chaman, so far, how's the experience been and how's the training going so far of the tournament? Uh, yes, thank you so much. Uh, so I'm playing footy since last uh, seven years. Mm -hmm. I joined footy in uh, 2017. And uh, I went to uh, Australia for, rep uh, for represent Pakistan in IC17 World Cup. And last year, I played in Thailand Asian Championship as well. Uh, so obviously the footy is going in Pakistan so good and uh, like uh, m many of the uh, cities in Pakistan, so everybody now knows uh, what is Aussie rule football and they wanted to participate. Like it's now playing not only in Islamabad and uh, Rawalpindi, it's playing in Karachi, Gujranwala, Lahore, Multan, Sargoda, Sawabi, so many cities. So uh, we, uh, we, all, uh, we all are training hard with all the federation and the coaches and now we are uh, under the supervision of the great and uh, coach Michael Gellas, they, he is training us. So obviously uh, the footy is going in Pakistan so well. Certainly, I, I also agree that I think across Pakistan the talent was scattered but the way we've brought it to the national mainstream is absolutely amazing. Uh, Tara, obviously you've been with the team for quite some time now. As a skipper, it's also your responsibility to make sure that the talent that has been identified you know, is very comfortable, they're polished as well. So, so far, how's the preparation going? What are you looking forward to when you talk about this Asia Cup? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you're absolutely right. The talent, the new guys are really important. And this is what we've been doing from the past five, six years. A lot of new guys have joined in, um, like um, our coach said, people from Multan, Gojamala, uh, Bahalpur, etc., etc. So yeah, I mean, it's great to see the growth, and which is the most important thing. And uh, for all this to happen, you know, I really thank you know all the organizers, uh, you know, for such as the uh, you know our uh, our president, Mr. Tariq Mahmood, and uh, our. Uh, um, main guy, you know, we always call him the big guy, you know, Chaudhry Ali, Chaudhry Ali. So, yeah, I mean, uh, preparations are amazing and we're doing a tremendous job. And, um, you know, we're like a uh, week, you know, uh, into the game, games right now. And I believe, you know, the kind of preparation and the level that we're seeing right now, uh, I've, I've never seen that before. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it's really good and we're really happy to see the progress. Certainly. Uh, well, now, of course, we have got to talk about AFL Pakistan women's team secret weapon now. So I think they're going to unleash that in the Asia Cup as well. But Sabika, what's your journey uh, once you were introduced to the sport? How are you finding it and how's the preparation so far? For me, I was introduced to the game by Chaman, of course. Mm. And for me, it's very thrilling. It's rough and it's very fun for me, especially when I'm playing as a rug. Mm -hmm. And all the coaches over here are so good and they're so supportive and especially Mr. G, of course. 
And it's been a very fun journey for me. When I went to Thailand, it was a good game. But this time in Vietnam, we're definitely going for the win. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I like this attitude, Ramji. The uh, attitude you've brought, the Aussie mindset to Pakistan now. It's all about winning, isn't it? But then again, we have to be realistic. Uh, when you talk about this Asia Cup, all the teams participating have got a great competitive edge to them. It's going to be an equal competition, but obviously we're there to win. But we've got to realize our strengths and you know the strengths that uh, and the challenges each team is going to possess. So are we taking this game by game as you usually do as well? Oh, 100%, 100%. Uh, it's a tough competition. It's the best team in Asia in AFL. We're in the pool of death. We uh, drew Japan, we drew Cambodia, we drew uh, Hong Kong, we drew Indonesia. Sadly, India on the other side of the draw. Hopefully we, uh, hopefully we face them in the finals and absolutely smash them. As you know, I sat here in 2022. AFL Pakistan don't go to compete, they go to win. And the preparation, the fitness, the skill level, the mindset now, everyone knows that we go to compete to win, mm -hmm. not just to compete. So, and uh, really right. excited to mm -hmm. have that opportunity. Well, Michael, majority sports in Pakistan, what the problem has been traditionally over the years is that, you know, our brand of, uh, of sport that we're playing and the international brand that is supposed to be played has a stark difference. Now, this is probably the only sport in Pakistan that is already playing that international brand which is required. So I think that really helps a lot for the players, doesn't it? A hundred percent. And that's when I came here, firstly in 20, uh, 2019, my first visit, to grow the game. And then when I came back in 2022, was to prepare the players to win the game. Now, they know that mindset. They know the training standards. Uh, we're into a second day of a four-day training camp. Took three hours a day for the men, two hours a day for the women. We were expecting 20 women to turn up for the selection trials. We got 35. Mm -hmm. From that 35, we cut it to 15. We we're about to cut it to 15. So the top 15 women in Pakistan, the top 15 men in Pakistan, their level now is at the elite level. As you said, it's not about playing. It's not about competing. It's about winning. And you have to be at that elite level to win, to be the best in Asia. And they've proved it. They've proved that they're able to work hard to produce those results. And it's great credit to the players, great credit to the AFL Pakistan organization, mm -hmm. and great credit to the support I get from the media. Media now is putting it out there. Everyone knows AFL in Pakistan. Everyone rings Chaudhry Ali all the time. <laughs> when are trials? When can I play? They ring Charman, they ring Tulla, they ring Sabika. So we're building that momentum. We come back with two cups for the Asian Cup, mate, that, that will be a miracle. Never been done before. Men and women win at the same time. Everyone thinks the AFL uh, Pakistan women's team in 2017 when they play in Melbourne, absolutely uh, smashed. Only kicked one goal the whole tournament. So we're going over there. They all think the girls team cannot play. They think the boys are okay, but not the best. <laughs> so we will, uh, as you said, we've got secret weapons. We call it pack ball. In Australia, Hawthorne mm -hmm. AFL team, they have hock ball. Mm -hmm. we got pack ball. We attack hard and we finish hard and we win the game. Inshallah, we do. Mm -hmm. And I, like I said, that you know, I am a firm believer of this entire cause as well. But Tala, it's important to uh, realize where we stand now because you talk to your social circle as well, your family and friends. How's the mindset drastically changed over the past couple of years? Well, um, you know, it's, it has definitely changed for better. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, the, I mean, the game has really grown, you know, and people have started to know about AFL. Uh, back when we started, to be honest, I didn't even know anything about AFL unless I started off playing. And then, uh, thanks to people like Michael, our coach, you know, um, he's been, uh, he's been, he's been, you know, advertising us everywhere, you know, on his social media in Australia, and everybody now knows about us. So yeah, I mean. Uh, Everybody is actually really excited to see us play and compete in Vietnam this year. And uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, um, like, we're, like I said, that we are one of the favorites. So, I mean, everybody is like looking forward for a win. And uh, that's what we're going to do right now. Uh, Tala, is that a bit of a you know, pressure situation as well? Because now there are so many expectations and you're only going to win. Simple as that. So how are you supposed to balance that as a skipper and make sure that your team don't take pressure of that international tournament as well? Well, um, you know, you're absolutely right. You know, since we've been calling ourselves, um, you know, the winners already, I mean, it could actually backfire too. I mean, yeah, of course, why not? But, you know, we've been keeping a very close look on the oppositions and the teams that we're going to play. And the good thing is that we've already played with them in the past couple of years, um, in 2023 and 2022. And that's when we got the trophy as well. So, yeah, we kind of know how they are going to play. And we know the strengths that we've got, the weaknesses that they've got, and we're going to work on that. So, I mean, if we 
uh, you know, if we, do our, if, we, if we keep our stats perfect, I believe we're going to overcome everything. Certainly. Uh, Sabika, uh, when you talk about uh, the international tournament, a fair bit of experience is already there. But how's the synergy between the team, your coordination and communication, which is an imperative part of this sport? How would you say the team is gelling together with each and every one of you? team is rolling together very good and the coordination and the excitement is very it's over there you can see it everyone's coming to the practice they're training so hard for it and especially the coordination and we are led by chaman and she just tells us what to do and we are the, the excitement you can see it in this time is she a tough skipper she is a tough skipper. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way it should be i mean simple as that but chaman uh, since you are a tough skipper i think that prime responsibility is with you as well how is your communication with all your team and how do they respond to whatever you're telling them? Uh, yes, uh, I'm just uh, very thankful to my all the senior and junior girls, uh, my colleagues, my friends, my students that they join footy and I coordinate with them uh, on daily basis and uh, send them a message with my uh, great coaches Irfan Khan and Shafkat Niazi. Uh, uh, call them in the ground on the time and leave them their houses if they have any facing any problem uh, because of the roads. Uh, so they they are coordinating with me all the time as well, and their response is so good. And obviously, uh, when there is uh, any issue, the coaches are absent. So I just uh, coach them as well, and mm -hmm. I just training myself as them mm -hmm. as well with them. So uh, they, they listen to me, they respect me, and I just uh, love all of them. They, they're working hard, and I, I hope so that, uh, I, as uh, you can see, Aussie coach is here, and mm -hmm. he's so hopeful for, to see us that uh, we can bring a cup for a uh, women <laughs> team for Pakistan as well. And uh, he's never disappointed uh, with us because he, he watches uh, now, so we hope so. so uh, he boost up as well when he says you can bring a cup as well so we boost up for this and uh, we trust that we can do certainly. it certainly mike and be careful up. she's going to take your job i'm yeah. telling you <laughs> <laughs> but you know my, my mike's like captain barbosa so you know he's going to give no quarters to the enemy <laughs> and once the team's not performing well he's going to treat them as mutiny and you know walk them the plank over the ship throw, throw them overboard simple 100%. as that so you have to be the best simple as that but obviously uh, like you mentioned mike uh, the mindset has changed now. Uh, the physical and technical capabilities were already there. They just needed to be polished. So once you're talking to them about technical stuff, uh, it has to be a major improvement since the last time you were here. They're prob probably better equipped now to the sport and all its dynamic and rules as well. 100%. So a lot of the boys, this is their third international game uh, overseas. A lot of the girls, sec uh, third international game as well. Uh, so they understand now what they're going into. The first time we went, we won one game. It was like we won the grand final. <laughs> now they know we win a game, we congratulate each other. We're there to win the whole thing. Next game, win that game, congratulate each other. We don't celebrate until we make finals. We don't celebrate until we win the finals. And that's the mindset across the whole organisation. They're very professional, led by George Riali, Sadar Tariq, uh, but uh, saying the coaches, I haven't been here for two years. Uh, Coach Fareed, co the general, Irfan, they are coaching them in my absence. Tala, Charman, the players now know what is needed. The fitness level was at the elite level when I arrived. The skill level is at the elite level. And they work hard. They train hard. We see cricket in Pakistan. I see hockey. I see the Olympics. It is, it is a mindset and a determination to really work hard that they don't have in a lot of the other sports. AFL Pakistan, when I got here first in 2019, I said, let's set the level high. This is what we expect. When I, one player turned up one minute late, 100 push-ups straight away. <laughs> Another player turned up 30 seconds late, mm -hmm. five laps mm -hmm. straight away. Okay, so they understand the mindset and the professionalism. No cutting corners. Every single second counts. We've got to get over there. We prepare. They all know we're not going for a holiday in Vietnam. We've got three days of really hard matches back to back to back. So the fitness levels and the work we do now, that gets us ready to go. When they get there, they know what to expect. They know what to do. And they're going to go out there and do it and bring the cup back to Pakistan, inshallah. 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 But uh, Mike, there must be still some areas which we need to improve. So what are your still primary areas of concern where you think that, you know, we probably need to be more focused on right now? Obviously, I think nobody's perfect in this world. We're all learning at each and every curve. But which is that one area of primary concern which you think right now needs to be talked about the most? Okay, the boys, to be honest, nothing. <laughs> They're ready to go. Ready to go. Mm -hmm. Tyler will tell you, today's practice, outstanding. Mm -hmm. One tap, long kick. 
uh, Big Mark, Big Raman from Multan, mm -hmm. attack the pack, jump high as he could, like a sword like an eagle, <laughs> take a mark, go back, kick the goal, ball falls to the ground, Tawhid zips in, a bus zips in, pick it up, bang, goal, in defence, General Atik is down there, we've got Afsul down there, every single player, Shahab, he won the sprint at the 2022 um, Asian Championships, fastest across every Asian team. So he's in the team now. Mm -hmm. So we've got the speed, we've got the endurance, we've yeah. got the strength, mm -hmm. we've got the knowledge, we've got the tactics. So yeah, inshallah, we're the favourites and we should be the favourites and we're not going over there unless we come back with the cup. Mm -hmm. The girls just need practice, practice, practice. Today, first match simulation, two hours. They, by the end, a lot better than the start. Sabika will tell you that uh, we just need to, another two days of practice the girls will match up. Again, they've played these teams uh, last year at the Asian Championships. And they beat one, they lost marginally to another team, and they lost badly to another team. So, but now I've structured them up. We've picked the best 15 across Pakistan. Same thing. They know what to expect. We go there, we, uh, we get ready, we train hard, we, and then mm -hmm. we come home with the cup as well. Well, what's the mindset now back home as well? Because obviously you're talking to people, yeah. they're looking at your digital media, which you're handling fantastically, mm -hmm. let me be honest. You're already a global superstar on digital media. So how, how they're responding now? Are they more interested to know about the Pakistan team? That mindset should be certainly changing back home in Australia as well. Oh, 100%. Yeah, every Australian American for AFL Pakistan. Get on Facebook, TikTok. Uh, Snapchat, uh, Instagram, AFL Pakistan, get part, come on board and enjoy the show. Uh, yes, they got respect when they won in 2022. First time a national AFL men's team uh, competed at the Asia, Asian Championships actually won. Everyone stand, oh, Pakistan in AFL, you kidding me? This time, if we win both, mate, around the world, that will reverberate 100%. <laughs> yeah, that's everyone. a headline. That's a headline for 100%. at least a couple of months now, I, I do believe, I think. That is certainly the case as well. But Sabika, the training right now, which Michael is talking about, uh, how are you feeling right now? I, I understand it's a lot of work still, but you know, in the next couple of days, you've got more sessions planned. So, you know, to be internationally ready and physically fit, how's that going along? To me, uh, for me, it is going great. I've been training, for, especially from the last couple of two years. We've been doing great. Everyone's coming to the training, and we have a few good skippers. We have Hadra, we have Chaman, we have Tamina, and our defense is so good. We just need uh, more training, and we are doing it. And as I told you, we are especially going for the win this time. Well, what's your message, Sabika, to the fans now? Obviously, any sport you know grows with its fans as well. So people in Pakistan who are watching right now, what's your message to them? Because you're going to play an Asia Cup in Vietnam. What's your message to the entire Pakistani community? My message to them is that you should uh, come and do express yourself. You should do what you want. Especially if you train hard, you work hard, you can achieve everything that you want. Certainly great message as well. Uh, Skipper, what's your message? Obviously, Tala, you've been gaining a lot of ground as well. I'm already sure there's a, a people lined up for autographs now. Or if they're not, they better be at the <laughs> airport once you come back as winners. So what's your message to the Pakistani community? Well, um, you know, my message um, directly goes to the youth. Uh, I mean, it's a big chance. You know, everybody can be, uh, can, uh, you know, represent Pakistan. Um, and it's, a, it's, a, it's an easy way to do that. Easy way in a, way in a sense that we don't have a lot of competition. We don't see a lot of competition right now. But as the game grows, you know, it's going to be as tough as getting into a cricket team. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, if you're up for any sport, uh, definitely, uh, why not AFL? I mean, it's one of the most exciting and I just love it. I mean, it, so, I mean, if I love it, I guess you guys are going to love it too. So, yeah, that's my message. Absolutely. Good message as well. Mm -hmm. Chaman, what's your message to the young girls out there? Okay, my message is uh, to all the college and uh, university going students as well, the young generation that as uh, a footy is growing up in Pakistan uh, so fastly, so uh, you can see in uh, school and colleges, everyone is uh, focusing only football and cricket, all the youth. So I just wanted to tell them, you can uh, come in footy, Aussie rule football, try this game. It's, so, it's tough and hard, but you will enjoy to play this game and you can represent your country, Pakistan. Nobody can stop you if you're talented, if, if you have more talent, agility, stamina, speed, running, long kick, nobody can stop you. And other message, I want to... Uh, uh, I want to just uh, request all the listeners and especially Pakistan Sports Board that please support us, please support us. There is no, no 
there is so much talent in women as well and male side as well. Uh, please support Aussie Certainly. football and we need obviously mm -hmm. sponsors. So I, I just request sponsors to mm -hmm. support us as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, step up as well. But Magic Man Mike, what's your message to the Pakistani fan community out there? Obviously, like I said, any sport's got to grow with the fans who have to be involved themselves as well. 100%. It's the greatest game in the world. I wouldn't be sitting here 30 hours on a plane from Australia <laughs> if I didn't love the game. 29 years of coaching it. And uh, you've heard the players, they love it. It's a mixture of kabaddi, uh, basketball, <laughs> rugby, um, NFL, and no pads. So exciting. You can, you can, if you can run, you can jump, you can kick, you can handball, you can play the game. And a big shout out to thank you, my work. I'm a head of secondary and head of sport in Christway College in uh, Melbourne. My school gave me two weeks leave. End of the year is so busy. I thank my principal, Kerry Neoffer, too, executive principal, Damien Higgins, for giving me the opportunity to come here and grow this game and give opportunities, especially to Pakistani women. And uh, as I said, 35, we've got four under 16 girls that come to training, train with the national squad, and they loved every minute of it. They were tackling the other girls, they were running, they were bumping, they were jumping. And that's the sport. Any size can play AFL. You don't have to be tall, you don't have to be short, you don't have to be fit, you don't have to be intelligent. You can just go out there, pick up the footy, pick up the footy, mm -hmm. catch it, kick it, handball it. What a great game. AFL, Sir, Pakistan, Zinzabad. Pakistan, Zinzabad. Well, Mike's absolutely right. And obviously, you've got to keep the boss back home happy and still keep a job when you go home. So I certainly, I would like to thank Mike's boss and his school as well for giving us the opportunity to host Mike once again. But thank you very much, Mike. Thank you very much, Chaman. Thank you very much, Sabika. And thank you very much, Tala, all of you for joining us. All the best from us. And we're certainly going to be rooting for you, be it here in Pakistan or be it in the stadiums of Vietnam as well. And inshallah, Tala, when you come back, we're going to be hoping for a victory and another cup on the table as well. That, of course, wraps up this segment. We take a short break. Stay tuned. We come right back. Welcome back and now we move on to cricket and we discuss uh, Pakistan versus Zimbabwe in detail as well. First of all, we're very honored to be joined by two more guests. Joining us first of all in studios is sports journalist Jabbar Faisal who joins us. Assalamu alaikum sir, how are you? Well, Islam, sir. Thank you very much sir. We've also been joined by cricket commentator, international broadcaster, presenter and our sports expert Kiasif Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum Asif, how are you? Wa alaikum Islam, I'm well, thank you. Well, you take a look at the match highlights and then we continue. That is the match. That is Ralph. Has got one to tuck it. Pakistan secured a convincing 99 run victory over Zimbabwe in the series decider at Buluweo, clinching the three match series by 2 1. After losing the opening match, Pakistan bounced back strongly to dominate the final two games. Batting first, Pakistan posted a competitive 303 runs for the loss of six wickets, led by Kamran Wollamps, made in ODI Short. century 103 away, runs. Then it'll go for four. Huge smile on the face of Cameron Gulam. Plenty smiles on the team. Supported by Abdullah Shafiq's 50 and contributions from Mohammad Rizwan made 37, Saim Ayub added 31 and Salman Ali Aga scored 30 runs. Sikandar Raza and Richard Angarawa took two wickets each. In response, Zimbabwe's chase faltered as they were bowled out for 204 runs in 41 overs. Skipper Craig Irvine top scored with 51 while Brian Bennett added 37. Pakistan's bowlers delivered a collective effort with Saim Ayub, a brown Ahmed, Haris Roof and Amir Jamal picking up two wickets apiece. Kamran Ghulam was named player of the match for his outstanding performance. And there you have it. All you need to know about this game as well. So, Jabarbi, a very clinical game for Pakistan. And finally, I think we're safe from embarrassment. We've won the series 2-1. Uh, uh, it's a good uh, win for the Pakistan and it's good news for the Pakistani cricket lovers. And especially, the uh, question is, we, what we uh, got from this series so far? Uh, I think the most important thing was uh, the induction of uh, Ibrahim Ahmed. He proved with his, his bowling that he can 
uh, bowled uh, very well and a match winning bowler. Uh, he got chance uh, after first match except first game rest of two uh, re in the rest of two matches or uh, you can say uh, opener improved very well. After a long time we saw a, a good start in the uh, second and in third 58 run partnership opening partnership that provide a solid base to Pakistan team that the rest of batsmen took the target at over 300. Actually uh, opening is very very important especially all for made of cricket but in the ODI we are looking uh, or searching these type of pair mm -hmm. for a long time. If uh, we will uh, take these guys more ahead and give more opportunity they will improve with the time. Uh, in the world you can see uh, one there was a time when the West Indies was on the peak, Greenji Hens was the best opening mm -hmm. player. In Pakistan, Mohsen and Nidhasar. One was playing aggressive and second was rotating the strike. This is a uh, basic scene which I, which I saw after a long time. Uh, we have very good opener Amar Sohail and uh, uh, Saeed Anwar. But after a long time, uh, especially in the third match, I saw that the both opener played uh, technical innings and, and there abilities. was a lot of balance in between as well. But Asif, I think I, at this moment in time, I'd just like to <coughs> mention one particular statement and that is domestic co is a door. And once you do that, this is what you get in front of you. And uh, I'm particularly talking about Kamran, Ghulam and Tayyip Tahir. Well, that said, and you know, uh, the start was dejected and of course that everyone was sad the way Pakistan has started against Zimbabwe ODI. We lost, rain shortened the game, but uh, the second and third game, uh, each and everything was perfect with Pakistan, especially when we talk about that they're, they're fielding, that was on spot, balling, uh, it was on song and they have started from the Australian tour, that the Pakistani bowlers, they bowled really well, especially Haris Rauf, of course. And then, you know, Ahmed Jamal was there and as uh, 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 Jabbar Bhai was talking about that uh, the spinners, the role of the spinners, now we could see that uh, Abrar is there, he started his career with the white ball and he bowled so nicely. And then I'm coming towards your statement, towards uh, the domestic cricket. I always talk about the domestic cricket. They res give respect to the players who are performing so well. They and Kamran Ghulam, he was performing from last two, three years and everyone was talking about his hard work, the way he has uh, done uh, and he has improved his abilities. So I think he played a stunning knock and of course that uh, his century was remarkable. And uh, when you do your uh, first century, uh, 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 and, and, and I'm talking about players like uh, Saim Ayub, he has scored his first century in this uh, uh, series against Zimbabwe and then Kamran Ghulam. So both of these players they were so good and uh, Pakistan required good players like Kamran Ghulam who got some solid technique. Whenever we talk about that the ODI games, you know, you have to play 50 overs and you cannot uh, play this kind of game. But Asim, moving without forward, moving forward, a couple of people obviously are going to come back into the team. We've got a pool of players now. It would be very disappointing that if we only make a playing 11 based on the name and the stature of players and not the current form which are, you know, they have been enjoying. To drop Kamran from here onwards is going to be probably the most disappointing thing in Pakistan cricket. Well, I, I think, Ahmed, you cannot take these kind of decisions. And yes, I strongly agree with your statement that a player who is performing so well scored 100 um, in his debut in Test match and now he scored 100 in uh, Zimbabwe got enjoying the best form of his uh, career and if you're thinking that you're bringing some other players and some big names just because they are big names I always uh, uh, against this idea and you know that uh, people are talking about that if Fakhar and Imam is coming back into the side what will happen with Abdullah Shafiq and Saim so I'll go with Saim Ayub and Abdullah Shafiq instead I mean see yes uh, I have criticized on Abdullah Shafiq and Saim Ayub but if they're performing well for Pakistan, we definitely support these youngsters. Certainly we do. Well, that's all we have time for. Thank you very much, Jabar Bhai and uh, Asif, for joining us. That wraps up Sports Extra. For me and my entire team, it's goodbye for now.